I think mail-in voting is, is gonna rig the election. With the presidential election right around the corner, the big question is no longer, will Donald Trump try to cheat? It's now become, how will Donald Trump try to cheat? And with more Americans than ever expected to vote by mail due to coronavirus, it looks like he's zeroing in on his plan. President Trump is stepping up his effort to discredit mail-in voting as vulnerable to fraud, ramping up attacks on Twitter and on television. I think mail-in voting is, is gonna rig the election. I really do. They want to steal an election. That's all this is all about. They want to steal the election. There is no way you can go through a mail-in vote without massive cheating. Democrats are pushing to expand mail-in voting and change existing voting laws to make it easier for people to cast ballots at home because of the coronavirus. The president wants his uh, political allies to fight back against that, and they have now pledged $20 million uh, for that effort. For real? Only Donald Trump is weird enough to have beef with the mail. Every day he's less and less like a president and more like a neighbor in a sitcom. God damn you, mailman! <laughs> I mean, this guy is spending $20 million to sue mail-in voting. Normally when Trump spends that much money suing you, it's because you've seen him naked. I know what you saw last time. You can't tell anybody. You can't tell them about this thing that I got. So even though the president and almost everyone in his administration votes by mail, Clearly, he thinks that letting everybody else do it would be bad for his re-election. And because lawsuits alone won't stop mail-in voting, the other part of Trump's plan is to just stop the mail. Tonight, a backlog of undelivered mail is piling up in post offices around the country. Workers are blaming the new Postmaster General, a top Republican campaign donor who has given more than $1.1 million to the Trump Victory Fund. Louis DeJoy forced cost-cutting measures leading to undelivered mail piling up at post offices across the country. And CBS News confirmed this internal postal service directive that outlines an operational pivot, saying extra trips to deliver mail are no longer authorized, and that we may see mail left behind or mail on the workroom floor or docks, which is not typical. The service insists it's not intending to slow down any delivery or risk any election mail. But the stakes are high for the USPS to follow through on its promise of on-time delivery. 32 states currently will not count ballots that arrive after election day, even if postmarked earlier. Wow. Even if you mail your ballot in on time, 32 states won't count them if the post office gets them in late. And that doesn't sound like an election. That sounds like what happened to me in high school. Yeah, I gave my friend a love letter to pass to my crush, but then he decided to skip third period instead. So she never got my letter. So she went to prom with another guy and then they ended up getting married and having a kid. So that should have been my kid. And that's what I told the cops, but they made me give the kid back anyways. And that's why you gotta defund the police. So look, if Trump and his cronies are trying to sabotage the post office, there's only one solution. And I hate to say it folks, but we have to let Bed Bath & Beyond run mail-in voting because no matter how much I try to stop them, I keep getting those coupons in the mail. It's ridiculous. I don't need all of this. I don't need all of this mail. I don't need to know that there's 35% off shower curtains. Oh shit. It was expired. Anyway, so Trump has been on a crusade against mail-in ballots. And then he installed a close political ally who just happened to start slowing down the mail, which means that come November, a lot of votes that are supposed to make it by election day might not. It also means that in the meantime, all the other mail is getting delayed and it's having a huge effect on people's lives. In some parts of the country, customers are waiting weeks for their mail. These neighbors in Chicago's Dunning neighborhood want consistent U.S. Postal Service mail delivery. Susan Carter says when mail is delivered, it comes late and sometimes it's not theirs. I just think the system fell apart and I don't think they care about us. All that stuff that's important to you that nobody else should be in, get, maybe going to somebody else's house. In Baltimore, people waited two hours in hopes of getting their mail that never showed up. 
Many aren't getting bills and paychecks on time, putting a strain on their homes and businesses. Survived the COVID, survived everything. The only thing I didn't survive was the mail. As a veteran myself, I get medication through the mail. I rely on that. And not to have it when I need it, that's a travesty to a veteran. Yeah, you see, a lot of people think that mail is just a waste of paper, credit cards that they're not gonna sign up for, and ads for shit that they're not gonna buy. But for many, many people, that's how they get their medicine. It's how they communicate with family members in prison. And for many areas of the country, especially rural areas, the post office is the only way they can receive mail. So the mail might mean nothing to you, but it means everything to some people. Think of it like a Wilson volleyball. It might not mean anything to you, but when Tom Hanks got trapped on that island, it was his everything. Do you think he was f***ing that volleyball? Nah. So look, it's becoming clear as day that unless Trump changes his mind on the post office, just like every other Trump business, it could be doomed. So maybe to save themselves, the postal service should do what every foreign dictator does, flatter the shit out of Trump. Are you a Trump supporter who needs to mail your electricity bill or an angry letter to CNN? Then you're in luck. Introducing the new President Trump commemorative stamps. Specifically designed by the U.S. Postal Service in a desperate attempt to earn his approval, each stamp commemorates one of our president's great achievements. Like the time President Trump defeated the sun in a staring contest. Or the night that President Trump personally killed Osama bin Laden. And true collectors will cherish the stamp featuring President Trump's stunning cameo in the video. And if you order now, you also receive a booklet of Mike Pence stamps that you can paste next to Trump so he can forever gaze adoringly at the greatest president of our lifetime. Mike Pence stamps have no value. So order now. These stamps will only run until November 3rd or maybe 2024. We'll see what happens. They want to steal an election. That's all this is all about. They want to steal the election. I think sometimes America gets so caught up in its own exceptionalism that it ignores warnings it could be taking from other countries. You know, if America paid attention to Brexit, it would have realized how social media can be used to bamboozle people into voting for crazy candidates who promise to fix everything. If America paid more attention to China, they would have realized that coronavirus is something that could come to this country and screw everything up, as opposed to something that only happens overseas. And if America might think that rigged elections are something that only happens in other places, well, in reality, it's already starting to rear its ugly head right here. President Trump up the ante in his battle against mail-in voting today. He appeared to say the quiet part out loud, telling Fox News why he opposes a funding boost for the U.S. Postal Service. They want three and a half trillion uh, billion dollars for the mail-in votes. Okay, universal mail-in ballots. Three and a half trillion. They want twenty-five billion dollars. Billion for the post office. Now they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of these millions and millions of ballots. But if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting. God damn. I've never seen a villain give away a plan like that without seeing James Bond tied to a chair in front of him. I mean, because people, this is insane. Trump got impeached for trying to secretly rig the election and his response is to go, I learned my lesson. I won't rig an election in secret ever again. And the truth is this effort to sabotage mail-in voting is a real threat to America's election. If Trump gets his way, they're gonna have to change all the I voted stickers to end in a question mark. I voted? I guess the one upside of Trump telling us all of this right now is that it gives Americans an opportunity to fight back and prepare. Although the downside is that it's gonna put a lot of TV detectives out of their jobs. President Trump is making big changes to the U.S. Postal Service that appear to be slowing down the mail. But one big question remains. Why is he doing it? In a new interview this morning, President Trump explicitly said that he is opposing a request for Postal Service funding in the new relief package because he wants to stop the expansion of mail-in voting. I guess we solved it. So first for the franchise. We finished this sandwich. Now, I thought I had some time, but I guess not. There is no way you can go through a mail-in vote without massive cheating. Obviously, Trump is very confident that the voter voters will put him over the top. But as a backup, he's also been moving ahead with Plan B. 
destroying the U.S. post office so that Democrats can't vote by mail. But over the weekend, attacks on the post office became so brazen that the people started fighting back. The escalating showdown over the post office and mail-in voting. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has cut short the August recess, called the House back into emergency session to confront the Postmaster General over cutbacks in service, which could disrupt the delivery of mail-in ballots and effectively deny some people the right to vote. This morning, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is taking the dramatic step of calling every member of the House back to Washington for a rare Saturday session this weekend to address the crisis in the U.S. Postal Service and growing questions about the November election. After reports surfaced in recent weeks of postal workers removing those iconic blue mail collection boxes from street corners in multiple states, the agency now says it will halt further removals for 90 days, citing, quote, recent customer concerns. U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy Joy's home was the target of protesters over the weekend who accused him of undermining the service in order to suppress the votes. Banging pots and pans before 9 o'clock Saturday, protesters marched to the front steps of what they say is Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's D.C. condo. Man, you gotta admit, there's few things that suck more than being neighbors with a Trump appointee. Because you know, at some point, People are gonna be protesting the shit out of your building. Not to mention Russian politicians always showing up at the wrong apartment. I'm here for secret, but totally legal meeting. Ah, you want apartment 7D, not 7G. Oh, my bad, my bad. But now that you have seen face, I offer you drink that is not poison. But, but for real though, can anyone tell me why they're removing mailboxes? Like if they don't actually need them, then why don't they repurpose them, you know? Uh, Turn them into a trash can or a flower pot or a new apartment for Oscar the Grouch. I mean, maybe he'd be a little less grouchy if his house was filled with postcards instead of bags of dog shit. Now, Trump is claiming that the reason he's going after mail-in votes is that it has too much fraud. But no one has ever been able to find evidence of that claim. So yesterday, Trump's chief of staff said this. Do you realize how inaccurate the voter rolls are with just people just moving around, not let alone the people that die off, but sending ballots out just just based on a voter roll registration? Anytime you move, you'll change your driver's license, right. but, but you don't call up and say, hey, no by the way, I'm re-registered. voter fraud, though. Uh, that's, but there's no that's ed- not, evidence of widespread there's, voter there's fraud. No, there's, no, there's no evidence that there's not either. That's the definition of fraud, Jake. Wow. So there's no evidence of widespread voter fraud, but there's also no evidence that there isn't widespread voter fraud. I mean, once you go into that argument, there's nothing you can't claim anymore. I mean, sure, I haven't seen any evidence that aliens are cloning humans and making them compete in talent competitions in space, but I also haven't seen any evidence that aliens aren't cloning humans and making them compete in talent competitions in space. So clone Trevor, if you're watching this, you give them hell in that dance off, buddy. And listen, People have all sorts of theories about why Trump is attacking the post office. One of those is that he wants to slow mail down so that ballots don't arrive in time to be counted. But another theory is that he just wants Democrats to think that the mail is gonna slow down so that they don't trust the mail and they don't send their ballots at all. Which is why over the weekend, the king of the Democrats, Barack Obama, came out with a different message. If you're in a state where you have the option to vote early, you need to do that now. Because the more votes are in early, the less likely you're gonna see a last minute crunch, both at polling places and in those states where mail-in ballots are permitted. As much as possible, we wanna relieve that pressure. America really is an upside down place. The black president is telling everyone to vote early and the white president is trying to make sure everyone's late. And Obama's right. Waiting until the last minute never works out. Like that one year I waited until July to get my beach body, but then all the beach bodies were sold out. So in the face of all kinds of voting obstacles, that is President Obama's advice, which he reiterated on Twitter. Vote early if you can, and then tell everyone you know to do the same thing, which I guess I'm doing right now. I mean, you guys are basically everyone I know. But just in case, I'm gonna try to tell more people. Hey everyone, don't forget to vote as soon as you can. How about you shut the up as soon as you can? Okay, thank you, sir. I know um, 
very little about a postage stamp. Democracy in America isn't defeated just yet, because yesterday, Democrats in Congress called the Postmaster General Louis DeJoy to get answers out of him about what the hell is going on with the USPS. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy appearing on Capitol Hill yesterday to defend recent changes to the U.S. Postal Service ahead of the November election. The hearing before the House Oversight Committee was at times combative. In an exchange with Congresswoman Katie Porter of California, DeJoy acknowledged a lack of familiarity with some basic aspects of the Postal Service. You don't know the cost to mail a postcard. <laughs> I don't. What if it's like one of those greeting cards that's a square envelope? Then what is the postage? I'll submit that I know uh, very little about a postage stamp. Within a million or so, can you tell me how many people voted by mail in the last presidential election? No, I cannot. To the nearest 10 million? <laughs> I will is be, that a no, I, Mr. DeJoy? I would be guessing. And I don't want to guess. I'm glad you know the price of a stamp, um, but I'm concerned about your understanding of this agency. God damn. This guy's like the worst person to bring to a trivia night. Okay, the next question is, what do you call the box that you put mail in? Oh my God, thank God we've got the Postmaster General on our team. What do you think, DeJoy? Um, okay, I know this one, they're blue. Oh, I'm taking all of them away. Oh, I should know this. But in a way, this is kind of refreshing to watch. I mean, we're so used to seeing guys in power mansplaining and going, well, actually, it's refreshing to see a man who's just like, look, lady, you tell me. I don't know shit. 